Hi everybody, welcome back to another video here at Maintech. Uh, in this video, I'm just gonna take you through some general sort of inspection processes on your brakes, um, especially when you get the most common sort of a scenario where we come up with brakes squeaking. Okay, so I'm just gonna show you in this video how to uh, check the condition of your things like your brake discs, uh, your brake pads, and to see if they're seized or nice and freely moving inside the carrier itself. Okay, so just looking behind the caliper here, uh, we're looking at actually removing this uh, part here. This is the caliper unit that sits on the back of the brakes. This is where we've got our piston arrangement inside here, and that's what forces the pressure against the brake pad to actually clamp it against the brake itself, so the brake disc itself. So the only thing that you need to do to remove one of these calipers is we've got a little cap down here and one at the top here. And if we just pop those two off there, so we just pop, that cap off of there and we'll just pop the cap out from uh, down below there and we'll just pop those to the side so they're nice and safe and then what we're going to need is to access the little securing bolts which just sit inside our caliper here and here now on this one this is a volkswagen uh, but very very commonly they use an allen head connector bolt like this all right and this is a seven millimeter size socket so we're just going to come into this section here, grab our ratchet and just pop it onto the end of the socket there. And we're just going to go in the anti-clockwise direction. Okay, so we're just going to slacken that one off there. And we're just going to come up to the top and do the exact same thing there and just turn it anti-clockwise like that. If you've got a ratchet like this, that's perfect. Or you can use a cordless ratchet like this one which just makes the process of speed, if you're a keen DIYer, uh, just a lot quicker. So then you can just turn those out. And this is what you're actually looking to release, okay? This is your slider pin. So we're just gonna take the one from the top there, and we'll just take the one from down here at the bottom. And that's both of our slider pins released. And then all we wanna do is just uh, come back to the front of the caliper, and we're gonna release a sprung loaded clip and I'll show you how to do that now. Right, so next step in the process is actually releasing this sprung loaded clip which sits on the front of the caliper. So just to be uh, safe while you're doing it because when you uh, pop these pins out of here, where it's a sprung loaded clip, you don't want it to sort of fling out and ping towards you. So if you just get yourself a pair of pliers and just secure the top end of here, just get a nice firm grip and support this actual clip, all right? Then you're just going to get a screwdriver in behind this clip here and just pry it towards you. Okay, that's all you've got to do there. And do exactly the same thing at the bottom, just pry it towards you like that and it comes out under a nice controlled manner. Okay, once we've got that clip out and it's nice and safely placed to the side, the next thing we're looking to do is just pry the caliper up, which is just nice and simply just use a screwdriver in the bottom here and in the top here, and we can actually release that caliper unit. Okay, so just a nice quick tip for you to make it easier to actually release the caliper unit itself is where the piston lies at the back of the caliper. Obviously, that's where we're going to have our uh, clearance set between the piston itself and the pads. And to make life easier to actually get this off, is if we grab the back side of the piston and just squeeze it, pull it towards you slightly, all that does is compresses the piston slightly and then the caliper can become nice and loose for you like this. Okay, and then instead of having to pry up with a screwdriver like this, now this vehicle is regularly maintained so I know that it's not gonna be in really bad condition but lots of vehicles are not regularly inspected so sometimes using a screwdriver just prying down the bottom here and prying up the top section of the caliper here will just aid you to actually release the caliper from the pads themselves just like that okay so if we just pull over like here and all we're going to do is release the brake caliper from the unit now if i just bring this up just to bring you a nice make you nice and aware of this this little cable that sits at the back of the pad that is our brake pad wear sensor and it just runs up into a plug connector at the top there. Okay, so always be very, very cautious if you are working on a brake assembly which is fitted with an electronic uh, brake wear sensor. So all you need to do is just slide that forward like that and our brake pad becomes all nice and free and it's separated from the caliper unit 
and you can just set it up top there or you can just disconnect the electrical connector uh, which is just a push together uh, arrangement okay and then the caliper what we don't want to do is leave the caliper lying here on our rubber flexible pipe because it can damage it so always make sure that the caliper is placed at the top of the disc okay so this position here this is the brake pad that i just mentioned a moment ago that's just here it's got an electronic brake pad wear sensor so as the brake pad wears down from the friction with the actual disc itself we've just got this little electronic wear sensor it's just a two wire sensor and what happens when this wears down uh, what will happen is the as the disc and the pad are in contact with each other the friction will obviously uh, take away the material here and that will just burn its way through and break the contacts here on the wire so all that's going to do is actually just break the continuity and what that does is that then triggers a light that comes up on the dashboard to make you aware that your brakes have uh, become low so what i'm going to do here just to be nice and safe is this electrical connector on the back i'm just going to remove this so that i can clean up the pad uh, clean up my carrier unit and the outer brake pad and make sure that it's all nice and greased and ready to be placed back on so that it works efficiently. So with that sensor, I'm just going to put the pad up here. I'm just going to push the sensor together and I'm just going to release it and just take it off like that. Okay, so this here is where the sensor connects into and this is what I've released. Now, when you do these, uh, very, very common is push the electrical connector forwards into contact with this section here push down on the clip and then it just sleeves away nice and easily for you so just be careful because obviously it's plastic it can become quite brittle so we'll take that over here and we'll come over to our inner brake pad so i'll just lower down here all right just like that so you can see nice and clearly and then i can just take this brake pad out now if you come to a brake assembly and the brake is very very seized okay so it's really stiff and it's seized and it won't come out of this component here which is our carrier what we're looking to do is obviously just very, very carefully just get a tool in between these sections here, okay, or in the top here. What we don't want to do is ever bring another another tool, sorry, into contact with things like our brake disc, okay, or the actual brake pad material at the back here, because what we don't want to do is cause any damage, okay. So always just be nice and careful and just lever it forward if you need to do so. And that's just a common issue where we don't have any lubrication materials behind the sliding points on the brake pad. Because what a brake pad must be able to do is move nice and freely in and out, just like this, for when we engage the brakes, they're clamped nice and tight against the actual disc itself to give us that friction and obviously the braking effort. And then what we want to do is when the brake uh, pedal is released, so that pressure is released, the brake pad itself has about half a mil of clearance between the surfaces of the pad and the disc okay and that just makes sure that everything works nice and efficiently and we uh, we don't have any brake imbalance uh, or, or a low brake effort etc okay so once I've taken that away from there these are the areas here which I was just talking about and these are where the brake pad itself slides in and out of these contacts at the top of the bottom of the carrier all right so that they're the areas that we want to make sure are all nice and clean so if we just take a look at our brake pad as a sort of a general health check, we can see that there is absolutely loads of material left on the front of here. So if we had a brake where it was uh, sort of squeaking and things like that, what happens on the top of the surface of the brake pad over a time period where we get lots of dirt and debris from the road, different road surfaces, etc. Uh, what we want to do is just take a piece of uh, scotch bright or some emery paper or wire brush, whatever you have at home, and you can basically rough up this surface and take the shine off of it. And then as you can see, just over on the side here, where we've got a taper, if I just turn it that way, you can see the taper on the side of the brake pad. That there is just collecting up all of this uh, brake dust. So this is what collects on the brake pad itself, just over a time period of when uh, that friction builds up. Okay, so what we're gonna do in this video is we're just gonna take uh, a piece of uh, emery paper, we're just gonna clean up this brake pad, we're gonna clean the contacts of our carrier we're going to re-grease these contact points here on both sides of the car and then we're going to place them in and these will be working uh, as they're in good condition overall anyway okay so i've just got myself a wire brush here which i'm going to use to just clean these contacts in here and here and on the brake pad itself and then just got a piece of 
sandpaper here okay this is a uh, 180 grit so it's perfectly fine it's rough enough okay just to come onto this surface all right so all you're going to do is just take sandpaper over the surface of the brake pad and you're just going to clean up that surface and take off any surface uh, sort of debris or any dirt and things like that that gets on top of that brake pad and you can already see just after a couple of moments how much is actually just coming off of the brake pad and we're given a really nice clean contact area here so i'm just going to do the exact same thing in these areas here and here and on this section here and then we can re-grease and put it all back together again okay so the next step that we were looking to do here is uh now that we've sort of taken off all of the excessive brake dust on the uh, contact face of the pad is we're looking at just placing some copper slip uh, just in here. Copper slip is always used. Okay, so it's uh, just this little pot here, anti-seize uh, copper compound. Um, what we're looking to do is use this copper slip uh, just simply because it's a very high temperature grease and it's perfect for uh, brake assemblies, especially as there's lots of friction and a great deal of heat that gets into those components. So all we're gonna do here okay is just place the end of our copper slip just in the contact areas okay on the brake pad itself so we're just going to place some copper slip in here and here okay and what that does is that allows the brake pad to move in and out of the carrier sliding points okay without actually ever becoming seized so we're just going to do that on the top and the bottom section of the brake pad just like this and then all we need to do is now just bring the brake pad and offer it up to the carrier and then just easy to place your finger just on the front side of the pad here and grab the back of your brake pad and just slide it backwards and forwards like that and then that allows the copper to move over this section of the carrier at the top and the bottom and we make sure that the brake pad can move as you can see there nice and freely and that means that this brake assembly is going to work perfectly. Okay, so the next thing that I'm looking to do here is just run our copper slip just around uh, the contact face here on the piston. Uh, this isn't really a necessity, but it's just my personal preference that I like to do because I know that it gives a nice uh, clean contact and a corro uh, sort of a corrosion inhibitor uh, between the back brake pad uh, and the piston itself. And then just as I stated earlier, these two fingers that we have on the caliper, all I'm looking to do is just take my copper slip and just give a nice, neat, sort of coating of that copper slip over there and what that means is that we now have a really clean contact with the outer brake pad and the inner brake pad yet when you actually look at the brake pad itself you don't see it coated in, in in any grease so it just looks really clean really professional and it makes sure that the brakes work uh, to obviously to the best of their ability okay so the next part we want to do is just get our inner brake pad uh, clipped back into our piston side so we're just going to take those clips on the back of the brake pad line them up with the piston itself okay there's quite a bit of uh, pressure behind them so if you just grab the back of the caliper and two thumbs on the front of the brake pad like that and then just push them back until it clicks in and then you can see that it's all nicely located back in the caliper unit itself okay so this inner brake pad has been copper slipped on the contact points on the top and bottom same as the uh, outer brake pad and i'm just going to offer that up like this and i'm just going to sleeve it in and all we want to do is just make sure that on the inner and the outer brake pads these locators for the top and the bottom are in nice and cleanly and it all offers up and it's nice and free to move and then we can locate our slider pins in the back um, and we'll sort of go from there okay so it's just taking through nice step-by-step -step process making sure that everything's uh, clean the excessive brake dust we've deglazed the surface of the brake pad we've copper greased the contact points here and then we're just going to go around the back double check everything and then we're going to offer up those sliding pins back in okay just before we do go around the back there what we want to do is just get hold of the sliding pins here with a piece of sandpaper and what we're looking to do is just take off this surface corrosion that we have just to make sure that the sliding pins are in the best condition that they can be. Okay, so all you do is just place that inside the sandpaper like that. And you're just going to run along the edges of this to just to take off that excessive amount of corrosion that we see on there. And once that's all removed, 
we know that the caliper can slide over these pins nice and smoothly and it just makes sure that overall that the brake assembly itself is just in the best possible condition to be reused and then you don't have any any complaints from a customer or if it's your own vehicle you know it's all going to be working uh, to a good standard so it's always really good just a great idea just to get these all nice and cleaned up any surface corrosion that we have on these are removed and then all we do is once they're cleaned up is just get a piece of copper slip again and just put a little smear just over the outsides of these okay and then again that just stops and prevents the corrosion build up and keeps the brakes in good overall condition uh, to work in the future for many miles okay everyone so we're just coming to our slider pins on the back of the caliper here now it's really important that you start these off by turning them by hand prior to actually putting them back in so when you push these through we're actually looking for the thread that's just you can see it's just poking out on this side what we want to do is make sure that we push those in and it locates into the housing without them actually cross threading so always be very very cautious okay and just make sure that when we've got our socket on the end of the caliper we push those in just like that and always turn by hand if you turn them by hand that means that what you're not going to do is actually cross thread anything and that's really really important whereas if you're using a tool it's much easier to cross thread something especially a small component like these slider pins so always start it off by hand and we can see that's already started now so i know the thread started and i'm going to repeat the same process at the bottom okay so now that i've started this one off here i'm just going to come straight down to the one on the bottom i'm just going to push that in and just give it a little wiggle around just so that you can locate those threads and like I said, just turn them by hand and then you can see the slider pin just going in to this little uh, casing here. And that means that everything's lining up and turning it by hand. We're not going to cause any damage to those threads. OK, and then once we know and we're confident that those threads have started, you can then get your ratchet. And then just finish the rest of that turning process. OK and just give them a nice little nip up there and then just do the exact same thing top and bottom over like that all right and then that makes that sure that these are now located and safe and uh if you really wanted to have an urge of caution you can use a torque wrench on the back of these um but you know i've been in the trade for many years now and i'm very confident to do these by hand but always make sure that you follow uh, all the tightening torques you can get these from uh, the sp specific tightening torques using a torque wrench you can gain from the manufacturer uh, or you can use uh, an electronic resource or something like that or always refer to your owner's handbook and things so tightening these up by hand uh, if you have an experience always make sure that you use a torque wrench so that you have that self-confidence to make sure that they are tightened up to the correct specific tightening torque okay Okay, so back around the back of the caliper, once you've come back to your slider pins and made sure that they're nice and tight. Okay, so the top and the bottom one here, just make sure that they are nice and tight here. Or always make sure, like I said before, if you have any experience, make sure you use things like a torque wrench. It's always best practice. And make sure you use one of those just to make sure that you're very confident about how tight these are. Okay, and then the last thing to do here is these little caps is all they do is just pop on and all you need to do is just with your finger just push them all the way home until they stop and then that prevents moisture and uh, dirt and corrosion and things setting up in the back of our slider bolts okay so that's great slider pins are now tightened and covered we know that all the brake pads are greased the retaining clip is in on the front and that's great okay so on to the next step uh, so back around the front of the caliper and we're just looking at putting our uh, sprung loaded retaining clip just back in these two little holes here so i'm just going to place this one in the front there and then it locates around the back here and we now need to get this one into this hole and this part of the clip around this part of our carrier so i'm just going to locate that in there what you can do is use your fingers to pull that over or if you really struggle you can use a pair of pliers just to get in here and that will also it round but just in case you're not able to 
if I just uh, pop that back off and I'll show you uh, what to do there if you're unable to do so. So if you haven't quite got the power in your hands to do it, or it's just a technique that's learned over years, is place your pliers in the bottom here, push that in the locator, and then just pull that clip around, okay? And then that will locate in as well. And then all you gotta do is just make sure that they're in and just give them a little tap just to make sure they're all located. The sprung loaded clip is just around the side of the carrier here and that's absolutely perfectly located and uh, that's that's job done. Okay, so the next thing to do, as stated earlier, um, obviously I pulled the back of this caliper unit uh, forward. So what I did is I actually compressed the piston slightly so that we increased the uh, clearance between the brake pad and the disc. So always make sure whenever you carry out any work, even something simple like uh, just cleaning your brake pads like this or replacing your brake pads, uh, you're gonna be uh, causing a bit of pressure on the piston. So any movement, we're going to increase a little bit of clearance there. So always make sure before you drive the vehicle or before you start it up or anything like that in this position, is just go inside the car and push your brake pedal with the engine off, okay, nice and simple, engine off, and just push the brake pedal down just a couple of times until that goes nice and hard. Okay, so I'm just gonna go in the car now and what you'll see uh, possibly is just a very, very small amount of movement from the piston into that brake pad. Okay, so I just went in, gave a couple of pushes on the pedal, and what I've done is I've just reduced the clearance that we had between the piston, piston itself and the brake pad. Okay, so that just means that uh, we've got the correct uh, clearance between the piston and the brake pad, and we're not gonna have any delay or any faults in the actual braking mechanism as we go. And then the next thing always do whenever you work on brakes is you just wanna make sure that they are able to turn nice and freely. Okay, so if you wanted to come around this side of the brake disc here, now that you've carried out some maintenance work, just make sure that that uh, disc is able to rotate around nice and freely, and we don't have any binding or any faults or anything like that that's occurring here uh, on the brake pad assembly. Okay, so just to recap, we've pumped our brake pedal uh, just to make sure the clearance is gone. The Retaining clip is nice and located securely on the front of our caliper unit here. The uh, caliper slider pins are tightened up and the caps are put back in on the rear. And then we've made sure that the disc is able to rotate, okay? Following on from that, always just double check things like your brake fluid as well. Just make sure that you've got your brake fluid level under the bonnet um, at the correct um, sort of height level. So that would be obviously the maximum level. Uh, check out another video I've done, um, which is on how to uh, carry out some basic checks under the bonnet, just for your, all of your fluid levels and things like that. Okay, just for that peace of mind. So thank you very much for watching. I hope uh, this uh, just sort of DIY maintenance uh, on your brake pads uh, was helpful. Please like, subscribe and comment. If there's any specific uh, jobs uh, or any other points you would like covered, uh, please just comment and uh, I look forward to replying. Thanks very much.